Yes, it's now time for Tech Central. Now, in today's world, technology plays an important role in every industry as well as our personal lives. Healthcare is a sector that is also being transformed by technology. Uh, to look at some of the breakthroughs that technology has had on the health sector, we are now joined by Andrew Waitito, the CEO for Healthcare GE East Africa. Good morning and thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Michael. I'm sure you'll agree with me that technology is definitely something we cannot do without today. And I believe technology has been designed um, and is there to make our work easier, possibly have more accuracy, and the health sector has not been left out. Maybe just to start us off, give us an idea of where we are today technology-wise in the health sector as compared to maybe 10, 15 years ago. So thanks, Michael. <clears throat> uh, I think I could uh, boil it down to three things. Mm -hmm. uh, the first is uh, probably simplification. Mm -hmm. Uh, as technology improves, we're able to, to make uh, the devices that we use, procedures, processes, uh, much more uh, simplified. Uh, this reduces in the total cost of, of healthcare. Uh, the second thing would be, of course, digitalization. Right. Uh, with uh, the ability to digitize a lot of the aspects uh, around, say, for example, uh, imaging, we are able to do things like uh, telemedicine. We're able to move images around uh, even within the same hospital outside into different hospitals, get specialists to look at uh, different things, thus improving the scope of care uh, for, the, for the patient. Mm -hmm. and, and the last thing I think uh, is something that's affecting us uh, in, in all aspects of life, which is mobilization. So things are getting smaller. Things are getting more mobile. Uh, we are now having, uh, you know, integration of, of different aspects of healthcare uh, because of mobilisation. Uh, one one thing that people uh, probably take for granted uh, that you walk around with every day is your phone. Right. Your phone can probably tell you to an extent uh, that the kind of health you are in, just by your your, your heartbeat, how many steps in a day you take, and if you if you you're able to tie that back in, uh, as a, as has been done in parts of the world, to an app that can give you a warning that maybe you need to see a doctor because this seems abnormal. Mm -hmm. We are starting to have that. I, I, do you think in Kenya we're getting there? I mean, I know right now there is uh, a craze of having a pedometer which gives you your heartbeat, maybe how many steps you've done in a day, possibly the number of calories uh, that you have burnt. But sometimes that seems very abstract in terms of how do I use that information? How do I uh, put that information together and actually now either give it to my doctor or uh, make some health decisions? Mm -hmm. So at the moment, I would say in Kenya, like many parts of the world, it's still an individual decision. Uh, most of the people who have bought uh, these pedometers and this kind of uh, fitness devices, mm -hmm. mobile fitness devices, uh, are doing it for their own you know, personal benefit. Mm -hmm. But you do find in certain countries, uh, parts of the industry have taken this to their advantage. And we'll tell you, I'm the health insurance company. If you give me access to your data, I can reduce your, your premiums premium. mm. based on how active you are, what it is that you do and that kind of thing, mm. then that obviously will now increase uh, the, probably the usability mm. of that data. Mm. But at the moment, I would say it's still very much an individual uh, decision. Mm. And uh, there's definitely health benefits to that. To that. Now, one of the things that possibly would make it rare at the moment and possibly um, affect many Kenyans is also affordability. Now, technology does come at a price. It is not cheap, especially when it is new but one of the things as much as you know technology is moving forward health wise the limiting factor for many Kenyans is the affordability is that something that we should envisage possibly changing in the near future I think we could say it's changing right now and we, for, to justify that answer let me take a step back away from the personal devices and look at what hospitals and healthcare centers are using because of this mobility and simplification we are able now for example as GE and many other providers to create devices which are much simpler to run uh, run on in take into account the environment in which we work. We don't have maybe clean power. We don't have power all the time. We don't have tons of engineers running all over the country to fix this equipment. So they have to be robust. And probably a good example would be uh, a mobile uh, 
uh, device that we, 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 we donated through the GE Foundation to the Shofco uh, NGO that runs out of Kibera. Mm -hmm. So this is an ultrasound machine that now is helping with, with births uh, for, for obviously expectant mothers. Mm -hmm. But because it is, it is mobile, it is simple, it can be used in any kind of environment and is much cheaper. Uh, to run. So yes, overall, you could say technology does bring down the cost of, of health care. Okay, and yeah. maybe that would be a good place to bring in now the uh, less fortunate, in t uh, financially speaking, uh, in society. And that is, a, I'm sure, a very uh, good device that is a mobile you know, scanning device or, or one that you can... Are there others that possibly you're developing that would now cater for our market? Because the kind of devices we have, most of them are stationed in a hospital. Majority will be in a private hospital. Are there devices that possibly you're developing that can now be more con contextualized to our situation? Yes, uh, so, so Africa is, is, is part of, within GE, is part of an organization that we call SHS, which includes regions, of course, of Africa, uh, India, Southeast Asia, and ASEAN. Uh, and basically, these regions are brought together to try and bring uh, speciality within to understand the needs of these more developing markets. And from this, we have been able to create a specific portfolio of devices that we call the affordable care portfolio. And by saying affordable, we are talking about price. We are not talking about reducing functionality. Right. So these devices are now, you know, more like, for example, the, the, the ultrasound device I talked about just now mm -hmm. is, is part of, of this portfolio, the affordable care portfolio. Mm -hmm. So it is stuff that is, is much more robust, uh, cheaper to run, uh, cheaper to install. This is another aspect that a lot of people don't understand. When you go into a hospital and you see, for example, a CT scan machine or an MRI, uh, a lot of people don't realize that there's a lot of money spent in just preparing the room to be able to accept this device mm -hmm. to have special power uh, available for this device because mm -hmm. it consumes so much. Mm -hmm. How do we reduce all those costs around the device because that's what will impact what the patient pays. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure that there, there would probably be a very good input if the government was able to subsidize some of the costs uh, both for GE and uh, for you know technology companies that are trying to develop the health sector. Do you feel like there's enough room for the, for, is, is the government doing enough in terms of uh, giving you support? So uh, I would say yes. Uh, and probably the best example of this would be the, the managed equipment services program that the government went into about two years ago. Uh, this, this is the one we, we've just <coughs> distributed to different counties. Yes, so 98 hospitals, uh, yes. two hospitals in every county were mm -hmm. upgraded. Uh, different aspects were touched on, uh, including uh, the operating theater, uh, ICUs, uh, sterilization, renal services, and of course radiology, which uh, GE was providing. So <clears throat> I think what is important is to understand the model that was, was taken to deliver this, which is a managed equipment service. So the, the government did not actually buy the equipment. The, we still run the equipment, make sure that it's running, because when you go to the hospital, uh, you just want to get a scan, right. whether the scan is, 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 is done by you know, a GE, GE machine or whatever, by, yeah. you want to get well. Right. And if the machine isn't working, what used to happen is a lot of people would be sent to a private center in town, mm -hmm. uh, which increases the costs. In some cases where there's an emergency, you find a patient is in critical condition, cannot be moved around. Mm -hmm. So the fact that this equipment is available across the country, we do actually have people, and you, you touched on this, who are able to, to, to run this equipment. Right. It does increase the amount of healthcare that's available where it is needed. Mm -hmm. uh, and overall, that reduces the cost of treatment because uh, the cost is not just the scan. Mm -hmm. It's not just the, uh, uh, the hospital stay. If you can imagine someone who's going for uh, renal treatment has to go every week or every two weeks and having to move from Machakos to Nairobi, it changes his complete economic you know, uh, model mm -hmm. at home, you know, all these kind of things. And so probably take, not yeah. even good for his health. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it takes into account a lot of things. Mm -hmm. So I would say the government is looking at different ways to deliver health care. Mm -hmm. Of course, there are different challenges. That is just the infrastructure uh, aspect of it. Uh, but... Uh, as part of that, and I think we'll touch a bit of it because we're talking about technology, mm -hmm. we are now also able to connect these hospitals to each other. Mm -hmm. So even where there's no specialist uh, or there is a specialist but he wants a second opinion, 
he can you know pass on that image that x-ray image to another hospital, to, another hospital mm -hmm. to knh and ask hey by the way what do you think mm -hmm. this is okay yeah. and, and i'll come to the accuracy because that's another question where we have uh, misdiagnosis or uh, issues with that but before we go to, uh, staying with 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 uh, the equipment and the infrastructure from your perspective do we have personnel that is well trained and able to run the equipment because it's fantastic to have the equipment but of course it is useless if there is no personnel in i can only speak from the the, the point of ge obviously as as uh, still an emerging market there's there will be some gaps. shortfalls some gaps uh, but as part of this program each and every one of the the suppliers had to commit to training uh, towards this uh, this program. So as far as uh, General Electric is concerned, we have trained uh, close to 1,800, actually a bit above 1,800 professionals, both biomeds and, and uh, radiographers uh, from all the counties. So we do have the capability for these people to, to, to utilize uh, the equipment that we have positioned to them. The, the positive thing also, again, and this is, touches on the technology side, is that because uh, we are using technology, you take the scan, you can immediately see on a high resolution screen what you have taken. And it also reduces the need to retake you know, scan. more, more scans, mm -hmm. which ultimately affects not just the cost of, of health care, but you also don't want to expose uh, the patient to too many, you know, shots of radiation, mm -hmm. which is another aspect that patients al always don't, you know, when you're sick, you just want to get well. If right. you're told, go back and take another one, you'll go you, back and yeah. take another one. Mm -hmm. You don't know the effect the it may have mm -hmm. on you in long term. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, the accuracy question, and uh, this is because you'll have experiences where people have, especially now, let me use an example of cancer, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, many Kenyans now are traveling to India to have their you know cancer treated there and this is because of several reasons one is cost two is also accuracy and experience we seem to have um, an environment where you'll go for a scan uh, go for a different scan at a different place and they give you two totally different results how do we overcome that and are we getting to a place where we do not have to pay such a high price to take people abroad for health care yeah, so let me, let me answer that question in two parts. One is on, on, the, on the correct diagnosis. Uh, an aspect of that is, is also purely from exposure. Like, you know, take sport. If you're a professional footballer, if you play 10 matches in, in a year, you'll only be so good. Mm. If you're playing 200 matches in a year, you're a completely different player. Both of them are professional players. So one aspect that has really changed with this uh, managed equipment service is that now you have radiographers using the best equipment all over the county. Mm -hmm. And so are exposed to be able to see different things. Of course, there may be uh, incidences of misdiagnosis. And I'm, I'm just talking about generally before right. we get to oncology. Mm -hmm. uh, but the digital aspect allows us to reduce that. Again, this also depends on the person. If I feel I'm the know-it-all and I don't want to ask anybody else, mm -hmm. if there's something I'm not sure of, mm -hmm. of course there may be challenges there, but that is an individual decision. Right. But because of technology, I can reach out to Dr. X in, in uh, Moi Teaching and Referral and ask him, hey, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. Hence reducing that, that chance. Mm -hmm. So there is that first bit of how many times do I do this procedure? And this, you know, cuts across any industry. With the more times it's done, the, the expertise improves. And not just the expertise of the doctor, but the teams around it, which is something the, the, the healthcare uh, facilities in India have, you know, down to a T. Mm -hmm. they're, doing hun yeah, they're, they're doing hundreds of these procedures every day. Mm -hmm. So the teams get really good at it. On the oncology side, I think uh, it's important to note that there was a critical aspect of diagnosing cancer that was missing from this in, in this country, uh, which is uh, using the right kind of, of, of scanning equipment with the right kind of scanning uh, injectables. We call them injectables, uh, technically known as FDGs. These, this is, is part of nuclear medicine, and we didn't have this equipment available in the country. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a hit and miss, and that's why those who could afford it would go to India. So that is now changing, and I'm glad to say there's a couple of, of projects that are currently ongoing, and very soon we will have that technology available is, here. Is, is it available in public hospitals? Because the other uh, challenge comes in when it's in private hospitals, that escalates the price. And only, honestly, the rich who can afford. Mm, yes. 
uh, I can I can firmly say that yes, it will be available. It will be available in, in public, public hospitals. Time frames? Do we have time frames for that? Uh, it's still work in progress, mm -hmm. but I assume uh, within about 18 months, mm -hmm. yeah, it will right. be available. You also mentioned on uh, some effects, and this again would be more to do with uh, radio radiotherapy and you know uh, in anything that exposes your body to radiation. And as patients, many times we are at the mercy of the doctor or the, the clinician who will not really ask questions. We assume that they are experts mm. and they know what they're doing. But are there concerns that possibly you'd like to educate the public on, one, should we more, be more inquisitive? Um, and secondly, what are some of the right questions we, sh we should ask, especially when our bodies are being put in these machines that we have no clue what they're doing, but we assume are going to make us better? That's a, a fantastic question, and I, I think <clears throat> there definitely is a lot of education that can go to the public. And, you know, the, the, the first thing I would say is that cheaper is not always better. Correct. Uh, you they find cheap that, is expensive. Yeah, this <laughs> cheap can be expensive mm. because you find that uh, there's equipment that's available, very cheap equipment. It will do the job, but at what cost to the patient? Right. If you're especially a patient who is probably going for multiple treatments and, uh, say, for example, in... Uh, uh, where you're, you're having an operating theater, there's a C-arm that is constantly exposing you to radiation because someone's doing a procedure, say a hip replacement on you. How much radiation are you, are you getting? It is, when you're in that position as a patient, it's obviously difficult to stop and ask the question, hey, you know, What's going what, on? what machine are you using yeah. and how much radiation <laughs> am I getting? Mm -hmm. Do you even know the difference? I think it is uh, important to ask the question uh, maybe do your own homework on what is being, uh, what equipment is probably being used and the amount of radiation that is, you're being exposed to. Of course, there are certain things that will, you know, check in your mind if you're having to do the same x-ray two or three times in a couple of days, that should, uh, you know, raise, raise a flag. Mm. Uh, but it, it's still quite open. It's something that I would think patients also need to take, all their relatives who are helping them should take, you know, more ownership of, mm -hmm. uh, similar to medicines and drugs and all this. But th we still have a lot of, you know, uh, we put a lot of uh, import on what the doctors tell us. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard sometimes, sometimes for a patient to Actually, I've even that. had experiences where you'll ask questions and the doctors somehow get offended because it's like you're questioning yeah. their ability, but it's just sometimes an inquisitive nature that you want to know exactly. what does this do. You yeah, they look down upon what they call uh, uh, Google doctors. Yeah, exactly. Because before you go to see that, you have already yes, you Google, you Google it and yeah. you, you try and figure out. But mm -hmm. I, would, I would say, especially where you're talking about you know, uh, radiation and things like that, Google it, have an idea of what is a safe exposure, mm -hmm. ask the questions if you can. Okay, yeah. we're out of time, but as we wind up, maybe just general advice to the public on how we can use technology not necessarily exercising what I call the poor man's medicine. And the poor man's medicine is where you go to the doctor when you really have no choice because you're literally down, you're sick. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are possibly ways and means that we can use technology to our advantage to ensure that we don't get to that point. I think, you know, there's, there's lots of, of applications, uh, there's lots of advice on the internet around healthy living. And healthy living isn't just about, you know, exercising and that kind of thing. It's, it's about eating right. What is it that you're putting into your body? It's about sleeping right. It's about, you know, being able to calm your mind in certain times of, of, of the day. They call it mindfulness. Mm -hmm. You know, how, because we're now living in, in this world, you know, you can imagine as, 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 mm -hmm. as a Nairobian, you probably were up at four in the morning. Luckily, you probably missed the traffic. Actually, 3.30. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, but your, our days have become so hectic. Mm -hmm. How do we ensure that we're able to ground ourselves and ensuring that we're also taking care uh, of our bodies and mm -hmm. our minds even before we end up in, in, in hospital. So there's, I think it's that holistic approach to healthcare that is more important uh, to us. We'd rather have you not use our equipment right. uh, and, and keep healthy because that's the, the, the environment is what, what really mm. matters. All right. Yeah. Mr. Andrew Waitito, CEO for Healthcare GE East Africa, thank you very much for joining us this Welcome. morning on Tech Central and enlightening us on some of the progress that's been made uh, health-wise in terms of technology. Thank, thank, you. thank you very much. Well, it is now that time of the day. It's 10 minutes to 9. Time for us to say goodbye and uh, wish you all a fantastic day. But do stay with us right here on KTN News. In another 10 minutes or so, Betty Kialo is going to be taking up the reins with news and reviews on News Center. Do have your yourselves a wonderful day. God bless.